Hello everyone, today I am here to do another master review. So if you don't know, master reviews are where I take three of my most of reads, I try to put them all in the same genre, see what all of them are about, what I rated them, and what I liked and what I didn't like about them, all for you in one video. They are all spoiler free, which is pretty cool essential because today I am doing three thriller master reviews. So I'm pretty excited about that because this year I have not read a lot of thrillers, but this month I am on the ball with it. As always, I will leave timestamps down below for each individual book I talk about in case you want to hear about that book, but let's get on to what books I am reviewing for today. Today I'm talking about My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing, Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, and The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. So the first book I'm going to talk about today is My Lovely Wife. So I wasn't planning to read this book at all um, because I just didn't know about it and then it exploded on Bookstagram in particular I would say and then I heard a lot about it on booktube and a lot of my friends have read it and given it five stars which it's a lot for a thriller for me to get five stars. It's a lot for any book for me for, to get five stars. I don't know if I'm just too picky but that's just how it goes but nevertheless I decided to finally buy this because I had to buy it because the library wait on in my library was like 25 people deep so it would be like months before I got it so I was like I guess I'll just buy it and hope that it was worth the money. I'm glad to say it was. I gave this book a five out of five. First thriller ever that I have given a five out of five so I really enjoyed it. So with all of these thriller books I don't want to tell you too much about them because with thrillers I think you need to know a few key things and just go into it without knowing the rest because it'll kind of ruin it for you and that's just I think a lot of people's mentality with thrillers and I tend to agree with it because the more you know about it the less you'll be surprised or intrigued if I I guess you could say. So basically what I with what I'm going to do with these three books because they're thrillers I'm going to give you some key points to maybe think hey would I be really interested in it and if all of these points of all these books sound interesting pick them up. So what I would say about this one it's about a couple that has been married for a long time. They have two teenage kids and they've had suburbia life everything's going good their marriage is just kind of so-so and then they kill someone and they get a taste for it and they want to keep doing it. So it's like them living their suburban life but also kind of, you know, killing people and it delves into it and delves into the deeper psychology behind it. Also delves into this marriage about can you really trust your spouse? Who are they really? I really enjoyed it. It had me guessing. I love the ending of it. I love how twisted it was. Like this is some, this is some twisted people. So either way, I really enjoyed it. A five out of five. It flew through. I will say some parts it got a little bit kind of lengthy, a little boring, it kind of meandered a little bit, but the ending nearly made up for it. The plots, the twist, the twist and turns and the road it took to get there, I really love. So yes, this is very overly hyped. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a very hyped thriller right now, but I really enjoyed it. I do think it's five out of five, but take my review with a grain of salt. I've seen people give this book a one out of five. I've seen people give it a three out of five. So every book is going to be different for every person. Just because 99 people gave it a five out of five doesn't mean you're going to give it a five out of five, nor me. Now, it just happens everybody's different. So this one I really enjoyed. It's definitely probably my favorite thriller of all time. Um, I just loved how dark and twisty it was, and I think this was her first novel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so I cannot wait to read what she writes next because this was just so, like, intriguing like if you like the idea of like a couple that's been married for a while that wants to kill people like pick this one up. Next up is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is his third book. I have read his past two, Final Girls and The Last Lie You Told. Final Girls is my favorite by Riley Sager and it is continuing to be my favorite. So no matter what though I will read whatever he writes because I like the way he, he writes his mystery. So this one is a little bit harder to explain. I'm gonna have to give you a little bit more info for you to get like kind of the full picture but not give away too much. So we follow a character named Jules who is kind of down on her luck and then she gets an uh, opportunity to be like this apartment sitter for this really illustrious and kind of high class apartment place and basically she's gonna get paid a lot of money to just like live there for a couple months. But there's a lot of strict rules that come with this place because this place is called the Bar Bartholomew, I forget, and it's really kind of old and ancient and there's been a lot of stuff in the tabloids and like news about them but the rules are like she can't talk to any other tenants. She has to stay every night at this place. She cannot have any visitors at all at this place. So it's like you know really odd rules for like 
not for a normal job or supposed to be normal but the more Jules is staying in this apartment she's realizing things are kind of a miss things are kind of going awry with the other apartment sitters and she decides to delve into more of this apartment buildings history and that's where it goes off from there so this one is a little bit different from Riley Sager's past novels Final Girls is kind of a trope on the last living girl in like a horror movie which I really enjoyed the last time I lied was like a camp story of like a missing girl and going back to camp solving the murder and solving the mystery behind it this one is kind of a noir kind of gothic-y where you're in this really creepy old apartment building and people might be going missing and something's up with this apartment place and the tenants that live in there but you're trying to figure out what exactly it is so overall I gave this book a three out of five I really enjoyed the first like three quarters of it it was it's kind of a slow start which doesn't bother these mysteries because you have to lay a lot of groundwork for them but what really got to me was the ending so you go through the force of this novel you're figuring out things you're trying to put this puzzle together and then when you get to the end it's something I don't think anybody's ever gonna guess and I just oh I want to talk about it so bad but like I I'm gonna do it okay so basically here's what I'm gonna do okay I'm gonna spoil this for a little bit, but I'm gonna warn you about it. I'll let you know when I spoil it. But the ending, I'm just gonna tell you this. You're either gonna be a huge fan of the ending, or you're gonna be a fan that hates the ending. I hated the ending. I buddy read this with Josh over at Squibble Reads, and we both felt the same way about the ending. We were just like, why, what? It doesn't make any sense at all. It was completely taken out of left field. Like, it's just, it went there. <laughs> but I did not like the ending. So overall, it was a good book. I'm not mad I read it at all because I do really enjoy Riley Sager's books but the ending just I think with any mystery book you can really enjoy a mystery book and then when you get to the ending it's either going to be like is this going to be a five star or is this going to be a three star. That's kind of how it was for me. It was either going to be a four or three star. It turned out to be a three star because of the ending but that's to say I've heard some people give this book a five out of five because of the ending so they love the ending. So like I said you're either going to be hate or love the ending. I've never seen anybody be in the middle about it but that's just my opinion. So I'm going to spoil this book. So you're going to see the picture of this book with a big thing that's a spoiler on it. Please do not watch any further about this book. Um, if you want to skip to this part of the video where I talk about the next book, please continue to watch more. But I'm going to spoil the ending because I need to talk about it. I need to have an outlet for it. And I need to talk to people that have read this book. So here we go. So the ending basically, Jules learns, we were thinking that was going to be like some sort of cult, some sort of like satanic thing, which I was kind of on board with. I was like, this is cool. And then we learned that basically the people that live in the apartment like they hire apartment sitters to be like organ donors so Jules was hired for, to get like her liver her um one of her kidneys and eventually her heart for the other tenants of the building so basically like it's this high class people that like need livers and kidneys and all this stuff so I just I you know I'm gonna be honest trying to be so much of a show um I, do I want to spoil that I don't know I'll, it's such a very kind of different plot twist that it's very odd that a movie and show would have so similar of a plot twist at the end so I'm just like how did that come to happen <laughs> but maybe if I didn't watch that show I may have liked the ending more of this book but since I just literally watched that show and I read this I was like what? <laughs> So I don't love the ending and the fact that they were harvesting organs was really odd and crazy and horrible but I just didn't love how it went to be. So yeah, spoilers over for that. Three out of five. I will read his more of his books but I just didn't love this one sadly. And the last book I'm going to talk about is The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. This one is a mystery thriller as well. This one takes place in two timelines. We follow the 80s and also present day. So in the 80s we follow this character named Ed and he has this gang of misfits and they live in England and they're just kind of running around and then they start doing this these things with chalk men. So they have chalk and they would write in different colors like they would go over to the friend's house. They would write like a chalk man then like draw a picture picture of the park and it would draw on a particular color so you know who drew it. So basically that starts happening but then these chalk men start coming up everywhere and they start, start revolving around this girl that is found in the woods that is dead and her head's like decapitated, all of her parts are decapitated and it's just becoming more and more of a mystery of what had happened and then we go into the present where Eddie is now 40 and he's living his life. He's kind of fallen away from his friends and he receives in the mail a chalk drawing with chalk in it so something is brewing yet again and basically that is what that this whole book is about again I gave this one a three out of five it's very short I would recommend it but 
I didn't love it. The ending was good. I love the plot twist it took. I love that there were different scenarios for sure. There wasn't like one clear cut way. I think overall, I just didn't love this one. I don't think I love the writing style a ton. I didn't really jive well with CJ Tudor's um, writing. And also, a lot of the stuff that happened in the 80s plot line, like there was a group of bullies that were just horrible. Like they were, they were mean, they were bullying, they were sexual against other kids. It was just... I did not like reading about that at all, but the mystery aspect I like. Like, I wasn't enthralled with it as much as I wanted to be because a lot of people recommend this book to me. I don't know if it's because I'm just super strict on mysteries or I don't know what it is with me. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. I'm just so wishy-washy with that particular genre. Most other genres, I'm pretty easy to peg on, <laughs> like, if I'm going to love it or not. But with mystery and thriller, I never know if I'm going to enjoy a book or not. So I like this book. I'm glad I read it. But I just didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I wanted a little bit more mystery, a little bit more questions of what exactly happened. But overall, three out of five, I would recommend it. I would recommend all these thrillers. Like I enjoyed all of them. All of them definitely had me guessing and kept me like wondering what was going to happen. But I would say my favorite was My Lovely Wife. I don't know if it's my favorite because it's more kind of domestic thrillers. I seem to really tend to like those a ton. But this one was just kind of creepy and dark. And man, if you want a weird book to read in fall, like read this one. Um, but I also enjoyed Lock Every Door. Like it's got that noir, I hope I'm saying that right, gothic -y thing. But the ending just, what? <laughs> um, and the Chalk Man definitely was very interesting. It had a lot of twists and turns with character development as well. But I didn't love, love it. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts about all these books because I know everyone's so particular about thrillers and me too as well. So I'd love to hear what you think. I've heard a lot of people comment said that they didn't like this one as much as everybody else did. So I guess I'm like, in the majority of people loving it. I don't know. But either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Please leave them down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.